the regular commission meeting on Tuesday, June 2nd, 2015. Uh, before I take roll call, I just want to let you know at the six month mark, we changed vice mayor. So right now, uh, vice, uh, Commissioner Anderson is now vice mayor. And we'd like to thank uh, Commissioner Jonas for his service this last six months. Um, vice mayor Anderson. <laughs> vice mayor Anderson. Okay. Um, here. No, here. Roll call. Here. Here. Uh, Commissioner Jonas. Yes. Thank you. And Commissioner Ross? Here. Uh, both Mayor Covielo and uh, Commissioner Watts are out. Uh, mm -hmm. Vice Mayor and Commissioners, I just wanted to let you know that Lucas Lopez, is, um, the mayor's partner, his father passed away, and the mayor and Lucas flew to Columbia at the last minute this weekend um, to be with family. <coughs> and Commissioner Watts is out of town on an academic endeavor in Athens, Greece. Congratulations. Pledge allegiance. Pledge allegiance. And I'd like for everybody to remain standing in <coughs> remembrance of uh, Lucas' father. Pledge allegiance to the United States, United States of America, and to the Republic for which we stand, one nation, our God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Presentations. Thank you, Vice Mayor. I just want to um, briefly introduce to the Commission as well as our public and our residents uh, a new employee. Claude Charles is our new finance manager. This is a new position that we've created that's a consolidation of two previous positions. Mr. Charles brings to the village over 15 years of experience in finance, logistics, and office management. He has specific um, experience most recently at a charter school which has a lot of the same funding and um, reporting functions that a municipality would have. He started here um, about two weeks ago and he hit the ground running feet first and has already brought a lot of organization and knowledge to um, our operations and finance and is setting up systems and working great with our staff to make sure that we are orderly, we are informed, and that we are making all of our payments on time. So this is a great opportunity for us. Thank you. Charles, if you just want to leave. Mr. Charles. Yeah. W w w would you mind, s mind standing so, so the camera can see, see you, so if all the residents can see who you are? Thank you. Welcome aboard. We have a proclamation, Code Enforcement uh, Week, and I would ask the clerk uh, to read it, please. Thank you, Vice Mayor. Um, June uh, 1st through 5th is the Code Enforcement Appreciation Week. Um, I'll just read the bottom. It says, and now, therefore, I, David Covielo, Mayor of the Village of Biscayne Park, do hereby recognize the week of June 1st through June 5th, 2015, as Code Enforcement Appreciation Week, and further extend appreciation to our Code Compliance Officer, Reginald White, and to all Code Enforcement Officers for the vital services they perform and their exemplary dedication to the commitment they represent, to the communities they represent. And we have here Reggie, Reginald White. Well, I just want to thank uh, first my staff for supporting me, uh, Christian, my manager, Heidi, my manager, and um, I just thank you to the residents too that support me. Uh, it's not easy being a code officer, but somebody has to do it. And um, uh, thank you again. Thank you. Does any, anybody on the commission have anything to say? What's that? Additions, deletions, or withdrawals of the agenda? Vice Mayor, I'd like to add an item 7B to informations and updates directly after public comments, which would be an update from WastePro. I've invited them to the meeting because I have some concerns about um, the recent service, so I think it's important that we have that discussion. Okay. 
Uh, I'd like to go ahead and remove 11A and move it over to July 7th regular commission meeting. That's chapter 5 uh, because two of the commissioners aren't here and I think it's an extremely important thing that all the commissioners be here to weigh in on it. Do I get consensus with the commission? So any, anything else for removal or additions? Okay, we'll move on to uh, public comments. I'd just like to comment. I'd just like to comment on the, on the me, chapter Dan? five things. I know Excuse you've just me, Dan. Could yes. you announce yourself? Dan Keyes. Um, I know you're not discussing it tonight. <coughs> uh, I came here three, four, five months ago when there was a proposal presented to the commission <coughs> on this, this subject, and I said to you all it wasn't ready. <coughs> and it needed work. I'm here again to say the same thing. I know you're still working on it, but some of the things that you've concluded uh, I think are still problematic. Specifically, uh, I have a you know, long list of things, but um, uh, I have an issue with retrofitting existing gravel, gravel driveways with a border that somebody thinks is necessary. Um, Generally, generally, the structure of this section of the code needs work. Uh, it's an amalgamation of years of stuff, tacking things on, doing the best we can to, to try to make it work. But when you do get something that you finally decide on, you know, you know I, I like to see a really quality code section, start to finish, that makes sense. Uh, I think four or five months ago I said, you know, have you actually vetted this ordinance against what the real conditions are in the, in the village um, to see how it's going to affect people, see whether or not it actually gives the village all of the wording that's <coughs> needed in the ordinance to get done what you want to get done. Um, and, and basically I just leave it open to, you know, it's been a recommendation that there be a workshop format by the by the commission as opposed to uh, doing it at commission meetings. Um, uh, I think that's a good idea. I think you know at least having having some public meetings where people have an, o <coughs> an opportunity to really comment on that, other than first reading of an ordinance, when you're not really inclined to make changes, um, would be a good idea. Um, I won't belabor that. Uh, I don't know what <coughs> is going to be proposed for giving away tonight in terms of public land, but I guess up front I'll say I don't really agree with uh, giving away my, my property for whatever reason. Uh, I'll see what the proposal is, but uh, tread lightly there. Thank you. Mr. Morris, <clears throat> 734 Northeast 119th Street. I apologize for my short pants. I didn't have enough time to put on a pair of long pants coming here to the meeting. But anyway, um, I just have one question, and it's for the manager, and I've asked it before. When in the world are you going to have these people come down 119th Street and take away the old pole? They chopped them off when they put the concrete poles in. I noticed Fred got his taken out. We never had ours taken out. And everybody asked me, and I said, I don't know, but I'll bring it up. Please find out and uh, put some heat to these people. Thank you. Vice Mayor, may I quickly respond? Yes. Um, we, um, <coughs> Doc, we consistently reach out to FPNL, and the issue still remains Comcast removing their equipment. So Comcast might 
I don't remember directly, but Comcast equipment might be off in front of your house, but it might still be an, on another pole down the street. So until all of the Comcast equipment's removed, and FPNL has monthly meetings where they sit down with Comcast because this is not just an issue here in Biscayne Park, it's an issue throughout the entire district for them. But we do monitor it. I wish I could just chop them down ourselves. I really do. Well, I gotta change that. Okay, let me know. <laughs> <laughs> Off the record, of course. <laughs> uh, Milton, 100, 646 Northeast 114th Street. Um, this will be very brief. I have three uh, things to say, two um, uh, thank yous. First to Christian and our public works staff. Um, they were kind enough when they were tearing out some of the foliage uh, around the log cabin to remove a very problematic tree that was planted some years ago that I was uh, going to battle with and losing most every month for trimming. So I appreciate that and replacing with something else very much. Uh, for our manager, Heidi, I'd like to thank you for continuing to look at efficiencies within our budget to find savings as you did with our finance department. Welcome. Thank you. And uh, keep it up. Um, lastly, relative to new business item 12D, um, this is something that's been discussed a couple times. It's a very intriguing idea but I want to make sure that we're thinking it through fully as to some of the ancillary costs that could be involved due to perhaps rezoning or surveying or any legal work to change any uh, distinction of property owned by the village or property owned by the uh, residents. I know this may have been born with the idea of the tree problem we had had that's been discussed through Section 5, which we're trying to resolve as well and other ways to protect the village from some of that liability or exposure to liability. Um, but I don't think now, especially after the debt we've taken on recently, we need to go into more expense for something, uh, if indeed it becomes so, for 12D. That's it. Thank you. Dan Samaria, 1030 Northeast 121st Street. I wanted to just, uh, the rec board is not involved. I just wanted to let the commission know that one of my company's plans of my annual 9-11 uh, thing that I do on 9-11 for the victims of 9-11. Uh, so please bear with me, I hope you will. Uh, I'd like to ask the commission in the city if I can put my 9-11 collection up. Uh, usually I wait until the last minute to do, so I'm learning to do stuff ahead of time. Uh, planning much better uh, to have the collection put up from um, 9 1 to 9 30 in the rec center. Um, I also had a conversation with Representative Golden Gates uh, asking her if she would, thought it was an idea of having children do some drawings on what they think 9 11 meant to them. Uh, the last year I had one <coughs> child ask me, Where's the drawing that I did last year? And uh, <laughs> explained to him was, you know, given to Easton and probably got locked up, you know, lost somewhere. So this year, she's going to help me with uh, getting kids to all stuff, and it's going to be put into a permanent notebook that's going to be part of the collection. As I have informed everybody, this collection is not for sale. Uh, God forbid when I pass, it's going to be um, donated uh, to f for future events. Hopefully, I would like to have it donate in Biscayne Park since I do live here. Uh, on the day of 9-11 itself, um, we, I am looking to have, uh, <coughs> still working on it, and I'll bring it up again next month. I just want to give an idea on what my plans are. I like to have where we, um, with a color guard, be at, sorry, at Griffey Park, and we would lower <coughs> the flag at half mass. Uh, prayer will be done by Father Fletcher. And then we will begin to, uh, where residents can walk from Griffey Park all the way to here. I still have to work more on with the chief on that. And then the color guard would come to the front and we would lower the flag again there. And then the color guard would march inside here and we would have uh, opening prayer. Hopefully, like I had last year, a proclamation by the mayor. I was hoping he was gonna be here today. Uh, sorry for his loss. Hopefully that we'll be able to get a proclamation and um, have it read by the mayor. Then we're gonna have a video, uh, readings of uh, victim stories, uh, remarks by the public, and closing prayer, and then refreshments where everybody can sit and enjoy. Last year, even on short notice, was very successful. A lot of people liked it. 
um, had trouble in the beginning getting people to stand up to read the prayer, the story that I had up there. But once I got Miss Rosemary to do it, everybody else jumped aboard. And so it was very successful. And hopefully we'd like to have it to where if the city is interested, I'd like to really work with the city on this to make this a huge success and an annual thing. Um, I have feeders out to uh, other cities, to the mayors, and hopefully try to get people to participate in this. Then starting next year, which I'll go more into it, uh, I'm hoping to have a sculpture made in memory of 9-11 and then donate it to the village. Again, that's down the line to do that, but that's just something I wanted to bring up. And as we get closer to that date, I, you know, I'll come back in front of the commission and talk more about it. But this time I'm planning it way ahead of time. Uh, okay, so thanks again. Thank you. Um, I'd like to ask our attorney, is this something that the commission actually has to give permission to, or is this something that uh, Dan can be working with staff and through the recreation department? Well, I guess this was done last year as well, so uh, the managers obviously worked with Mr. Samaria that, that can continue to work with them. It was, right. it was done last year, and if it's the same it's type of uh, event, I think that was something that, that worked out well. So, so. It's, it's not something that needs to come through the commission for approval then? It doesn't have to, especially if you're deciding that th you're very comfortable with the manager working with right. Mr. Samaria, right. then that's that's what we'll do moving forward. Because there's a lot that was said there that, that the manager will work with him on. Right. Okay. I'm sorry, Chuck. What, what's that? What's that? No. Uh, Chuck Ross, 11166 Griffin Boulevard. Uh, first of all, uh, I want to welcome our new finance manager, Claude. Claude Charles? Is that right? Welcome. Uh, after the uh, May 19th special commission meeting, we had a crime watch meeting. And I, uh, and I want to thank all of the people who attended. We had a very good turnout. I think these things are, it's very important that we continue to have these types of interactions between our police and our residents. And uh, I want to, if you will <coughs> remind me when the date is, Chief, we're going to, in August, we're going to have National Night Out. Do you remember the date? Or maybe Maria has it? Okay, it'll be, I'll announce it again. It'll be in like approximately the first week of August. And we're going to have a barbecue, hopefully at the new building. And we're going to have some vendors there. So National Night Out is an annual event every August. There's also something in October called Celebrating Safe Communities. These are all crime watch, national crime watch um, mm -hmm. uh, events that take place. And uh, it's important that... I think I think we have a very active. Uh, I know we have a very active community, crime watch community in our neighborhood, and and I want to ask you to once again reach out to those who are not part of the organization, and get them to come to the meetings and you know, try to attend if you can. And the last thing I want to say, and uh, the manager won't let me I explain it, but I want to I want to tell you that um, the manager, our uh, one of our other representatives, the chief. We were at a meeting yesterday, and they did a tremendous job. I was very impressed, and she's going to tell us all about it. And I'm not going to take it away from her. Thank you. <laughs> Janie Anderson, 11th Place on 119th Street. First of all, I've said it before, but I want a chance to say it again, Chuck. Chuck, uh -huh. I wanted to praise you first and foremost. You don't give yourself anywhere near enough credit for the resurgence of Crime Watch, for the greater activity in the community, you've made such a huge difference. And you don't get near enough credit, but you deserve it. Thank you, Jim. Now, on to item 12D. Well-intentioned though I know it was, I have to share the same concerns that Milt Hunter expressed. This is not a time to take on any additional expense. This is a time to be looking to trim so that we can handle these two buildings and the debt we need to incur to get them done right with minimal impact to our reserves. It can't be called revenue neutral because there is no way to predict what kind of additional tax revenue we might get and how long it might take to cover all the outlay that would be involved. And when I look at something like the alleys, I'm looking at the potential for lawsuits when people suddenly cannot drive that alley anymore, cannot access their backyard, where they may have a garage in the back, that may be where they store their boat and their RV, which is what we tell them we want them to do. And by giving that and now making it private land, we've taken that away. So the few problems that have been shown to be on the swales, you guys can settle that via ordinance, and you're starting to do that with Chapter 5. We really 
It's another item we don't need to make more expensive or more complex than it needs to be. Anybody else want to speak? Good evening. My name is David Young. It's a pleasure to be here today. Um, I'm a former judge and former television personality and radio personality, and I want to get back on the bench, and I'm running again for the circuit court. And part of my goal is to meet with every elected official and go to every community because I firmly believe that in order for the third branch of government to be productive and to be meaningful, we have to be able to all work together. And briefly, I have such a regard and respect for local government that I sit on, I'm vice chair of the planning and zoning board for the city of Miami. And that has been an eye-opening experience, especially when you come from running a courtroom, a criminal courtroom like I ran, to running a planning and zoning board. Fascinating. And I have learned, the lessons I've learned will be helpful in, because when you're a circuit judge, you sit as an, the appellate division dealing with zoning issues with municipalities. And my experience for the last four years will help me be a better appellate judge because I understand the concerns that the elected officials have. I understand the concerns that the community has, the homeowners associations. And I'll be able to bring a different perspective than the judge who only if he or she's been a judge for the last X amount of years. Um, I, I also believe that it is important that an individual who ascends to the, any, any elective office has the fire in the belly in order to do a great job. Like the members, in order for you to be a city commissioner, you have to have that fire, the desire to serve. And that's why after a several year hiatus, I want to get back on the bench. And I know that you have a long agenda. So I'm, as a lawyer, I know when to shut up. And I'm very smart with, in that regard. But I look forward to meeting with each and every one of you in the commission and all people in the audience, the citizen group, to get to know David Young a little better. I know the chief has known me for years. And I look forward to getting to know you. And if I have an opponent, right now there's no opponent, earning your support. Thank you very much and have a wonderful evening. Anybody else? Okay, I'm gonna close uh, public comment. Uh, manager? Uh, for the uh, updates, informational updates. Yes, sir. Getting back to the page on my I know, it's going through quick. Yeah, it was not there yet. So this is just our monthly update as we always do for the commission. And this is our financial position ending April 30th, 2015. The only department that has presented itself as over budget, we are at 58% of the year. And the only department that shows that it's over budget is the building department. And for the purpose of our um, residents who are here tonight, I wanna say that is a good thing for us to be over budget in our expenses in our building department because that means that we are paying our inspectors for more building permits than we anticipated, and that means our revenues are also over budget or over than expected in our building department. So that's a very good thing. Every department comes in basically under the expected 58%, as you can see, and the total expenditures for the village at 58% of the year is at 45%. Of course, there are some costs that don't come in until later on in the year. So that's not necessarily an accurate month by month total, but you can see that we are trending um, to come in under budget once again this year. Our revenues are ahead of schedule. This also is attributed to having about 90% of our ad valorem taxes in at this point, and we're at 79% of our revenue. I will be talking about the audit um, just very briefly during my manager's report at the end of the meeting, um, but we're looking good for this year. Regarding item 7B, um, as I briefly mentioned, I've asked representatives from WastePro to come join us tonight. Um, without really speaking directly with any members of the commission, um, as you know, I was out of town last week, um, I asked for this to go on the agenda because I probably am equally as frustrated as many of you are about some of the emails that I'm receiving regarding service. We are entering into our ninth month of the contract and um, there's still a lot of wrinkles that are being worked out. 
And while I very much appreciate the responsiveness to those wrinkles, I'm, I'm ready for the wrinkles to go away. Um, and I suspect a lot of you share my same concern. So I've asked um, Russell Mackey, Vice President of Regional Operations, to come here tonight and just give us an update on the current level of service and um, when we can expect to have a smoother ride. Good evening, Russell Mackey, Regional Vice President, Waste Pro of Florida. Um, you know, as Heidi said, we are entering our, our nine mo uh, ninth month here. And, uh, you know, while I see a lot of positives in, in, you know, what we've done here so far, there are consistency issues that are leading to the frustration. Uh, a lot of that consistency is around uh, the employees, uh, keeping the same consistent employees. And, and not to give you all of the lineage of what's, what's occurred, but uh, many of our employees have turned over in the village a couple of times and not by they're leaving waste bro because they're not happy uh, a couple of them have relocated uh, one of them one of our drivers had a personal issue had to leave the company uh, it's just been like the the bermuda triangle of uh, weird things that have happened to our collection personnel every time a, a a trained driver leaves the city this is a very difficult uh, city because of the back door uh, the many various places that people place their cans. Uh, there's some that are in bushes, some that are in little boxes behind a palm tree, some that are behind the house, some that are at the back door, some that are at the front curb. So there's always a learning curve. That's not your problem. That's, that's our issue to, to deal with. Um, our supervisor that was here, he had to have foot surgery. He was supposed to be back in five weeks. Uh, it's going on ten and a half weeks now, and he had another major setback. It's probably going to be another six weeks. But uh, we we have a family medical leave act thing. We have to hold his position open. We can't just replace a full time employee to to come in. And Orlando uh, Perez was a you know great supervisor. I know a lot of you were very happy with the service that he was providing. So we're holding his position open for him. So we're trying to use all of our other resources to to cover a position. Again, that leads to. Uh, issues with with consistency there's some housekeeping items uh, you know leaving debris in the street you know sweeping up uh, you know when we're picking up the piles those are those are things that that should be the wrinkles of frustration that I, I think Heidi is is addressing uh, we've myself I was here driving around we've got our operational staff on it I feel really confident in the ability of us to do everything that we've promised you received a very high level of service from your in-house department. That was never uh, in question. Uh, we understood it when we signed up, when we signed the contract, that we were going to be held to a very high standard. We're committed to uh, performing at that standard. And, uh, you know, I think, again, consistency. We can't keep having the crazy things. I mean, somebody moved to Georgia. Somebody had a personal issue. Uh, somebody uh, uh, got promoted. You know, there was a opportunity in Coral Springs for a supervisor position, and our recycling driver was the most qualified, best candidate for that position. It wouldn't be fair to uh, not allow him to have that opportunity uh, to move up within our company. So again, it's just been some some crazy things that have led to the inconsistency. We just got through our first spring season. You know, to March to. Uh, June, this was our first time going through the spring growing season with you. There's a lot of variations in the amount of debris. For 1,200 homes, this village produces a tremendous amount of debris. And uh, again, we signed up for it. We, we, we know what we signed up for, and we're committed to doing that. I just uh, I want you all to be confident that there's a you know, big machine behind, behind uh, the, the, the people that are on the ground here. We will get it worked out to your satisfaction. Uh, I, I, I feel that there are a lot of satisfied customers out there. There, there's some some ones that we need to work on, you know, getting to to the level of ultimate satisfaction that you you all desire. Uh, but you have my commitment. Again, as an owner shareholder, uh, I've been with the company since we we incorporated. Uh, I'm here. Uh, you, you, you know, I've been in the village since the be the beginning. You know, I, I oversee. About 350,000 homes of collection, and you know I, I 
I, I just want you to know how committed that I am, you know, that I, I'm not just having an underling <laughs> or somebody come to a meeting and, and express our company's commitment. You know, I'm, I'm here myself to do that um, because we are committed and we do understand the, what's expected of us. So if anybody has any questions or would like me to expand on anything further, uh, I'd be happy to do that. Commissioner Ross? I, I would just like to comment. I know we had a rough start in that first service month was um, there were a lot of track easy complaints that were lodged. I asked the manager recently to get me a report of all the monthly uh, track easies through May. And steadily those complaints were going down until we got to um, February when we had only about 15 complaints. I want to see us, I can't begin to tell you how to do your business, mm -hmm. you're the expert at it and I trust that you have the experience and know how to operate, but I want to see us go back in that direction um, and for these uh, non-compliance issues to be cleared up. Yeah, I, I, I'm very confident we will get back to that level, I mean really it's, it's it's a big loss when you lose a driver that you've invested two or three months to train where every single container is in, a, in the backyard. There's 600 homes out of the 1,200, or roughly, approximately, uh, subscribed to backdoor service. And if you're not the one that goes and does that every time, you don't know exactly where those containers are. And you might go on a property and, and it takes you a little while to, to, to find that, that, that container. So. Um, there, there, there are specific reasons that have led to a little bit of a spike. Uh, we have a driver uh, that has consistently been on the route now for about six weeks, and I feel that the, the, the garbage issues should be, uh, should, should really start to go to a minimum. Uh, we have supervisor Luis Martinez, who's covering here full time now, so he's very well versed on, on the village. That will help. And then the, uh, the third thing is you know, it was our first springtime season. So while we've been here for nine months, February to, to June is the growing season and it's the debris, you know, all of a sudden spikes in a very short period of time. Again, it's our, our job to worry about that, but th th there are a couple of specific reasons why you see that little. You'll see it normal off and, and go back down. I'm very confident in that. On a positive note, um, I think that a lot of our residents were very excited to get the rolling bins and you see more and more people putting their bins out on Tuesdays so I think that we have a greater participation in the recycling program. Yeah, and I'll share that information Friday. with Heidi. But the Friday. Friday is recycling. Yeah. <laughs> Friday is recycling. But yeah. Did I say what, a day? <laughs> I'm sorry. Uh, your recycling tonnage has steadily uh, gone up. That's something that we look at. So uh, the recycling in the city is, is getting better. Uh, I, I don't know if it took people a little while to get used to it, um, but your recycling tons have increased by about 30% since we started in, in, uh, back in October of last year. Good. Which is a very good thing. Right. I'd like to maybe see those numbers when we get to maybe the year point. Yep. Yeah, that, that's contractu contractually. Um, right. I don't recall off the top of my head, but we have the right to review the tonnage because there is a benefit. There's the recycling rebate in our contract. It's an audit rate. Commissioner Jonas, do you have anything to say? Um, the people who've contacted me, like you've already addressed, yes. you know, because of miss miss pickups. But the other thing, which I've I've seen personally, even at my own house, a number of times, it seems like they're for the trash, that they're in such a rush that they don't take the time to go ahead and pick up the mess behind them, or maybe they don't even have a broom on the truck. And, and I get, I mean, I've seen that in my own house, yeah. but I get complaints from other people for the same, same situation. Yeah, and, and again, I, I think why it seems like, again, that's, this is nine months into it, but generally when you, you start and you're getting the crew, uh, the first thing you focus on is getting the routes up and getting off the streets, you, you know, by six o'clock and you focus and you focus on that and then usually phase two to that is hey sweep up you know make sure the containers the the, con the the lid is next to the container on top of the container you know that you're sweeping um, when the driver is learning a route it takes 25 to 30 percent longer um, they're 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 just got to familiar familiarize themselves not only with where the, the cans are but how to get into the area out of the area it turns I mean it's a it is a confusing triangle uh, of a community while it's gridded 
it's it's graded in a very awkward awkward way so that's not a good excuse for you but uh, it's a reason to why you do see that um, we make sure that as of you know a couple of weeks ago every truck has a broom a rake a shovel uh, they should be doing that uh, towards the back end of the village it looked really good tonight there were some Air, uh, streets up here that I saw that, that weren't up to the standard, so we, st we still have some work to do on that, and we'll make that an area of focus going forward. Okay, thank you. Yeah, that, that should go, I mean, that's a big part of their training to, to put it back where, where it goes, um, you know, for all the reasons you just said. I mean, they shouldn't be leaving it in the middle of the driveway. That's probably not just here, but just in this industry. The single biggest complaint that we get is they left my can right in the middle of the, the driveway and I had to get out to, to, to move it. So um, those are things that we constantly focus on. And again, I can't hide behind anything or, 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 or say, you know, give you this, this, this grand thing. Uh, but when you're having turnover, you focus more on making sure you get it done than the little small things. And it's the little small things that are affecting us right now. It's, it's, it's not the big things. So when we have some consistency, which we need to have consistency now and we understand it, we, we, we'll focus on these small things and, and, and get those wrinkles ironed out. Yes, sir. Um, we could, all of our trucks are outfitted with a uh, GPS uh, system that, can, that, that reports the speed. We get an email to our supervisors if they're breaking the speed. It, it, it goes over MapPoint or MapQuest and tells exactly you know, what the speed limit is in the, on that street. So when they do speed, we are notified and we do counsel them on those issues. Also, the, the trucks are outfitted with uh, cameras on the front end of it and the back end of it. Uh, that, that are for safety reasons, if something happens, if there's property damage, uh, you know, we have basically video footage of, you know, what happens for the collection vehicles going through your communities. Anybody else? I guess, I guess you're off the hook easy. Okay, well, I want to say, you know, we really appreciate it. No matter how big or small uh, a customer we have, uh, we, we really, we built our business on service. I know a lot of you, the same faces were here when I was here, you know, uh, selling our company. We, we haven't built it on price, although that there was a, a tremendous savings in this decision. Um, we really continue to build our business on, on giving the service that we promised. So we're here. If, if things are not the way that they're supposed to, we need to hear about them. You know, don't, don't just think, ah, you know, it's, it's minor because that's the feedback that really helps us manage our business and manage our employees. So the Track Easy system is there for you to, to get a direct contact to us, have a, uh, uh, an issue lodged that we can, we can see how many we're having in weeks, months, and, and, it, and it helps us get better. Barbara? Again, uh, you know, our, our guys that work five and six, there's DOT regulations. We can't be out more than 12 hours. Um, so we, we can't make a, a you know, a, a steady uh, standard of that. Again, what's occurring is you've seen three separate crews learning the routes back to back to back. And I've never had anything like this happen where I've had the, the drivers and the helpers have you know, different opportunities in life, not bad things. It's not like they, they, they quit the company or got fired. Um, we, we have a driver now on your garbage route that's been on. Garbage was done today at 4.30, uh, 4.45, right around there. The, the bulk yard waste routes uh, wrapped up uh, probably about 30 minutes after we were in here, 7.30 today. That's we're fortunate because it's light out right now, but working drivers 12 and 13 hours is asking for a problem, so we, we don't want to be doing that. Uh, we want to be out by five. The real way we wrapped up at 7.30, is no way. Yep. They left our block at 7 o'clock, and we roll up at 8th Avenue with the roller streets in between. They wouldn't have to go 100 miles an hour to finish by 7.30. No, I, I, I called uh, two extra trucks in.
to, to the area tonight. Okay. Yes, um, go ahead. I just want to clarify something. Earlier, um, you mentioned 50% of your pickups. Is that, I'm guessing that's estimated? Is backdoor service, is that correct? Uh, they, they, there was a registration process that happened at the beginning. I, do, you, do you know the number offhand, Christian? It's, uh, it's over 500. It's 480. It's like 480. That's, uh, that's for backyard pickup? Yes, 40% then, not 50%. I apologize. Yeah. Yes. Dan? A while back, I made a few complaints about the trash uh, being left in the street. Uh, fairly obvious stuff. Tom Tom. Like it could have been picked up. Yeah. There, there's actually um, a, a U, not a bolt, but a U uh, piece of metal that they, the, all of them fit right, right in, on the back. right on the back side. What, what occurs, and I, I'll tell you, the guys go to the dump, and that door has to go up into the air uh, to push the trash out, and the guys get to the dump, and they forget to take the broom, the shovel, and the rake out, and they raise that door up, and the stuff falls out, and it goes into the trash, and then they're scared to tell their supervisor, hey, I left the, <laughs> the broom, the rake, and the shovel. So instead they say, oh, I don't have a broom, a rake, and a shovel. Um, and, you, you know, again, those are my problem <laughs> as, as a business uh, owner and manager to deal with. Uh, but we do, we, we, I, I spend more money at Home Depot on shovels, rakes, and brooms than, than you could ever imagine. They're on the side of the truck. Well, they are. They're right, they're right on the side, but they're on the tailgate you know, so they're easily accessible, and that tailgate has to actually lift and turn upside down to, to push the trash out. Maybe you should have a sign for on the side of Yeah, uh, that, that, that's actually, you know, probably something we haven't tried that we, we really do try. We try to take it out of their pocketbook sometime to make them remember, but um, that, that might be a good thing. Hey, remember to... Don't forget the well, the actual, the driver, the controls to raise the tailgate are inside the truck, so even a, a, a thing right next to it, make sure you grab the tools off before you raise the tailgate. It's a, a, a good idea. But, well, thank you. I think, Th I thank think you. you explained everything pretty quick. Consent agenda? to approve. A second. Okay. We'll call call the question. Aye. 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 Um, Vice Mayor. Yes, ma'am. Thank you for approving item 8C. I just want to introduce Lord Lourdes Abedin. She is here with um, Estrada Hinojosa, and I just wanted you to see her face because we'll be working with her throughout the year on our quarterly auditing as well as throughout our budget season. So I thought it was important for you to just see who Lourdes was tonight. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. We have no ordinances, no resolutions. Under old business, we have moved uh, 11A to next month. New business, we're under 12A. Manager. Vice Mayor and Commissioners, I have some very good news as we um, start this discussion. Our goal for the discussion tonight is just to set some broad goals for our budget season. Our budget season officially kicks off this week with the receiving of the June 1st estimate of the assessment role from the property appraiser and using this number the staff will sit down and start to create craft a draft budget that we will then use for the setting of the tentative millage rate at the June uh, at the July uh, village commission meeting but in order to do that we would like to hear some feedback from the commission regarding what their goals are for the upcoming year 
the clerk has just provided you with the June document that we um, received yesterday. And if you can see on the first page on the front, it's, it says um, that our assessed value is $159 million. Last year, our assessed value was $144 million. So we've gone up $15 million. If you turn to the second page, is the chart that shows all the municipalities and special taxing districts here in Miami-Dade County. Number 17 is Biscayne Park. It's highlighted in yellow for you. And including our new construction, we have gone up 10% from last year. If you recall from last year, um, from last year from two years ago, we went up 8.9%, and this year we've gone up 10%. So that's a significant change. If you spend some time in your leisure going through the chart, what you'll notice is that everyone that is at 10% or above, um, with the maximum being 15% for Key Biscayne, everyone except for two municipalities is a coastal municipality, Surfside, Sunny Isles Beach, Key Biscayne, Miami Beach, Bay Harbor Islands, and Biscayne Park and El Port Tau are the only other two to exceed, um, to basically be in the double digits with their percentage increase. So I think we are um, on the right track, and um, this puts us back close to our 2006-2007 assessed value, um, which is great for us. And with this information yesterday, um, I would like to offer as part of the budget goals discussion that it is the goals of the staff to find ways to increase municipal services and lower the millage rate at the same time with this added value that we've received. You just took one of my goals. <laughs> Commission, do you have uh, any anything any suggestions for goals? A um, couple of comments, and some of them are just common sense. We have some contractual obligations. Of course, we need to um, meet out what we will need to um, continue honoring those. I certainly would like to see us complete our log ca cabin restoration and with a reasonable amount of landscaping around the two buildings. Um, some of the things that we have been working on over the last couple of years, continuing with our tree trimming and improving our medians in common areas, we want to make sure that we preserve or add to the budget to do that. Uh, As you say, commit to our reserves and commit to lowering the millage rate. I uh, want to make sure that we continue to uh, engage the services of a legislative consultant in Tallahassee. Um, also would like to see us find some funding, and I'm not sure that it will be within the millage, may, maybe some other funding source to find uh, funding for planning for our streets and flood mitigation. And that's probably something we'll need a workshop to talk about at length. Uh, here at the Recreation Center, we've talked for a while about uh, improving the lighting around the walk, around the, the park. Um, improving the cameras and security system. And a couple of months ago, we talked about developing some kind of a master plan to repurpose certain areas of the um, recreation center. So those are some of the goals I'd like to see us tackle with the, uh, with the budget this year. And of course, we're missing two of our commissioners, so I think it's important to hear from, from the mayor and from Commissioner Watts as well. Commissioner Jones? I really don't have anything to add to what Rock said. I just, um, I just would like to see us continue to improve our general condition in every way we can. And um, Commissioner Ross, I mentioned to the manager that I was tossed with an idea whether to go ahead and move this whole thing to next month's meeting, but I figured I felt it would be better for the three of us to have a discussion and then have it on next month's agenda with what we discussed along with the rest of the commission. So at least the manager has a little bit of a direction of our feelings. Uh, one of the things 
manager. One of the things I would like to see is I know we, we schedule the workshop back to back where we do half the budget and half the budget. I'd like to see some space on that so we could digest what we've done and then maybe have a third short meeting or could be part of a commission meeting to this whole package put together so we can understand it. Because I'm concerned, you know, we're going through something we've never gone through before. We have a debt service now and, and all, you know, everything else and the renovations. And we, I think this is the time that we really, really, the whole commission needs to take a look at this budget. And you've already indicated that you're really sharpening your pencil on it. And to go ahead and do it due justice so we don't just cram it right through too quick. I, I tend to agree with those back-to-back -back budget workshops are grueling on us and on staff because at the first one we'll task staff to come up with different analysis and, and then come back the next night and they usually do take three or four hours. Mm -hmm. So uh, if we could find room in the calendar to separate them right. a little bit, I think that's and, and then because And then, then maybe have a not so much as a full workshop but maybe on the commission meeting because that second one where we're going through new things, then we see the whole package together. That's no problem. We'll look at the calendar. And basically the rest of the stuff that was talked about, the thoughts on the budget, I concur with. Okay, um, we're on to 12B, Board Appointments, Public Guard Advisory Board. Um, Vice Mayor, just to recap, currently we only have three board members on there. Right. So now we have a, a returning board member who submitted his application and a new board member. And then, you know, if both of those members are appointed, it's a full five-member board. Full five-member board. Do I have a motion to? Uh, no, no, not for Public Guard. Um, I make a motion to uh, accept the application of the public art um, for the public art board and the application for the planning and zoning board. That's a separate well, it's item. A, it's a separate, a separate item. This is okay. just just as for public art. public art. Do I have a second? Yeah. Okay, I'll call call the question. Aye. Aye. Okay, now we're down to 12C. That's right. the uh, Planning and Zoning Board appointment. And I just wanted to clarify, you all got my, I hope you all got my email uh, subsequent to sending you this. One of the current members resigned, Victor Ricondo. So right now we only have four board members, and now you have two uh, additional uh, board applications. And if I'm not mistaken, are either of those board members here for Planning and Zoning or applicants? And, th and they're both here in case you had any questions. Jacqueline and Brigida? Mm -hmm. I'm sorry, the names are Jacqueline. Mm -hmm. And you want them to come to the podium and introduce themselves? I, we're going to have to identify one as being a voting member and one as being an alternate, so I just wanted to have well, the names. Do, do you have any, is it, uh, there's, there's one question I think is important to, to get answered on it, so I, mean, I don't want to be stepping on, on you because both board members or applicants have the last name living at the same address and you can't be related to each other okay, to be on the more, same board. Yeah, I guess we weren't aware of that. So that's, you know, it's completely up to, I guess you guys, based on the application. Yeah, that's that's the requirements of resident of being a property owner. I mean, you can be on two separate boards but you can't be on the same board. Would one of them like to withdraw an application? So, well, well so, it, you know, instead of us deciding which one would be the best, I think I would rather see one of you decide that you would rather withdraw your application for the, the yeah. attorney's verifying that. Okay. I thought it was a, as a relative to the commission. No, okay, let me get. Mm. 
my understanding it was either to the commission or to each, to each other. Mm -hmm. I think that's right. Maybe. You can still make your determination which one you want to have on the board. Well, I was, I was asking them for, you know, we could either do that termination or go ahead and ask which one would rather. Oh. Assuming you can't both be on, would one of the two of you like to withdraw your application? I'll withdraw. Okay. Wh which one are you? That'll be Jacqueline. Yes. Okay. Soon, before okay. we vote, I want to wait till our attorney gets looking this up for sure. And then that doesn't preclude you for looking at one of the other boards and maybe serving as an alternate. Oh, definitely. Okay. Here it is here. It's an individual cannot be appointed to any village board or committee if that person is a relative of a current village commissioner or another relative on that board or committee, right? Mm -hmm. So this case um, really you wouldn't select an alternate then because they would right. be able to serve together. Yeah. Correct. So I'll make a motion that we accept uh, the application of Jacqueline to serve on the Planning and Zoning Board. Second. Okay. We'll call the motion. Aye. 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 Congratulations. I also, Thank you. before we break up, I would also invite you to serve on the um, Code, code Compliance Board, which works very you know, hand in hand almost with the Planning and Zoning Board. We have a full board though. And, and an alternate. And an alternate? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And everyone, I mean, you haven't had a problem meeting quorum, you're always there. Yeah, right. We'll explore other boards. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> um, my suggestion is to contact our clerk to see if there's any other boards that does not have an alternate, and also uh, if there is somebody who resigns to make sure you know, the clerk can contact you. Okay. You guys need to talk to each other <laughs> after the commission meeting. Uh, I'll follow up with you, Regina. Okay, so we're um, down to 12D, Commissioner Jonas's uh, giving land to property owners. Okay, Commissioner Jonas. There are actually th three kinds of, of tracts of land that the village owns but doesn't use and doesn't need. Um, and, and Milt, um, for your information, this, this um, concept actually started long before the issue of the famous tree. Um, one of the kinds of tracts of land the, vision, the village owns is a little network of pathways that connect um, various streets to other streets and these pathways wind around sort of behind people's houses and along the borders of their houses. There are several of them. I used to have a map of them and I don't know what happened to it, but you could never even identify these these little pathways anymore because they've been absorbed into people's landscaping. And it just would be a matter of kind of officially declaring that the village has no further interest in them and the property owners who treat them as their own property can have them. And whatever that does to their, to their property bill, so be it. Uh, so that, that's one kind. The other kind is um, the, uh, the excessively large swales. The village does not need large swales. Um, in, in the discussion about Chapter 5, which is a dis discussion that's not done, um, we sort of have focused on the swales in the sense of what kind of access the public needs to protect for itself, but it does not include any more swale than about 8 feet. Most of the swales in front of people's houses are about 8 feet, but some of them are much more than that. There's no uh, statutory purpose to that. There's no functional purpose to it. And so my thought was, why don't we just give all of that land to the homeowners since it's essentially, as a functional matter, part of their yard anyway. The third kind of land, um, and there's not a whole lot of this actually, it's smaller in amount than some of us would think, but it's the alleys um, behind some of the houses. I think there are four stretches of alleys in the whole village. Seems like it would be more, but there really aren't that many. Uh, and they are considered to be the access 
routes for the police and what we used to use for, um, for garbage. Um, we, we don't use it for the garbage trucks anymore for obvious reasons. Uh, the police, I guess, do use it or could use it, but I don't know how necessary it is. Uh, and my thought was that if we wind up to feel satisfied that not having our own garbage trucks is working out for us, or even if we decided to return to owning the, the program ourselves, but we agreed that the old trucks were too small, and we know that the big trucks can't get through there, that we would then simply give over those alleys to the, um, to the homeowners whose houses back up onto those alleys. And whether we would cut the alley in half down the middle or give it all to one side or all to the other side uh, doesn't make very much difference to me. But the point is, I just don't really see why the village needs to own these three kinds of tracts of land. They, they would serve the homeowners better than they serve the village. They will enhance the properties. And they will also increase the properties, which will increase uh, the, the taxable um, value of them, which does the village a little good. And, and it, it gives the, the homeowner something more to take pride in and to, and to improve. So that was my thinking. And that's why I think we should give away these little bits of property. Commissioner Ross, do you have anything to say? I think it's an interesting concept to um, allow homeowners to increase their land and also relieve the village of uh, maintaining those properties, some of which we're not doing a very good job of. I, would, I don't know how we would start, how we would approach the problem. It seems to me that we would have to first have a survey is done and um, then sort of offer offer it to the property owners. I don't know if the attorney has dealt with this kind of an issue. Thank you. Uh, uh, Vice Mayor, if I may. Um, yes. So there, there, the first thing you need to do because of, of state law and the sale of public property is to make sure that these properties do not have value. And I think probably on, on almost all these occasions, there's more of a liability issue than a value issue. So, but you would need some, an independent party to go ahead and determine that. Uh, also, like for the swales, you know, what size of swale are you looking? That's too big. You know, that would all need to be thought out. We may need a planning, a planning person to come in and help us with that. And then <clears throat> at that point, if there's a finding of really there's no value, and I've done that in other cities, on, on not on a universal basis, but on some big areas, one was a bridal um, trail. Um, then there are, uh, there, there is a necessity to get legals, um, surveys, and who pays for that. In, in, in the case of, of these 20 some odd homes with, with the bridal trail, uh, the Homer Association agreed to, to, to in, in the 20 homes agreed to pay for that. So truly then it wouldn't be a, a payment issue because of the value that they're receiving. Um, the actually, as far as permission, we really don't need, we could abandon those areas um, and, and really would need to, 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 to give permission for the most part. And of course, it's a very big issue and there may be other issues that, that we would need to walk through. But if there is a direction from the commission, I think first you would need to kind of have a universal look um, with a planning person that maybe you need to decide what size swale in particular is what I'm thinking is too big. Now for alleys, if they're gonna be used for access, they can still become private, but then you're gonna, they're gonna have to have cross access, cross easements. Um, what you see sometimes, in fact, there was just an article in um, uh, the ranches in, uh, in Broward County where there was a private road, and mm -hmm. each homeowner is responsible for that area. It was in, in, in the front mm -hmm. page of the local in the Sun Sentinel anyway. It's responsible <coughs> for that individual roadway, and that has become a problem because they're, you know, they're not used to asphalting roadways, and they have literally wooden, wood out there for the holes, covering up holes. So the first thing is to take a 30,000 foot look at it and then decide what, if any, areas you want to do. If you want to do all of them, that is, a, that is a project, but it can be done. There's a lot of uh, real estate law that gets involved in there, but it can be done. 
I think that it could be part of our discussion as we work through finding funding for the street improvements and the master plan we've talked about. I think that this may be something that could roll into that discussion. We could have a workshop on it and people get the public's um, feel for it. I, I, and I, I agree with you on that, but I think maybe Commissioner Jonas needs to talk to our manager a little bit to get a little bit more of an insight of what are we really looking at, not, not an exact number, but an overall good guess number of, of what this would entail. And then, be, because if we just bring it into a workshop without having any idea of the cost to it, I, I'd like to get some kind of a, a rough estimate, of then get part of the workshop mm -hmm. to see what the rest of the residents want. Because an example is like it's a, was said, uh, if you take an alleyway, <clears throat> what about if the person in the middle of the alley says, I don't want it, and their neighbor behind them, I don't want it. Right. How does the city maintain that? Let's see if we abandon it. And then, you know, it, I, I think we got to take a look at all of those. Then also, too, some of the alleys, people have detached garages facing the alley. And then, or people, I know, um, there's, there's a house, two-story house, off 119th Street. He has a garage. It's a corner lot facing the alley. If that split down the middle, wouldn't be able to get in, you know, really get into his garage very easily. So, I mean, it is, that's why I'm saying, you know, it's working it through with the manager of all what can be and what can't be, then, of course, what do you do with the utilities that are going to be sitting in these different areas? But I think it's a good concept, but you know, work with staff a little bit. I think it would be very difficult to even start to estimate what, we don't know what's going to be needed, so it's hard to estimate what it will cost. And as the attorney was saying, well, in certain circumstances, the homeowners might contribute to the cost of the surveys and the cost <coughs> of getting the legals if they're going to derive the benefits. So we initially, I think, just have to have a general conversation with the property owners throughout the village. And then we could start to hone in what a plan of action might be and get an estimate for that plan of action. Or maybe this is something later on this year because we've got a lot of stuff going on right now that when we move beyond. Oh, for, for sure. Uh, I'm not expecting us to have a workshop. I don't know. Fred, were you expecting to have a workshop right away? This is like a probably a multi-year discussion. I wanted this resolved by next week. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well. I mean, Commissioner Jonas, to get some clarification, I believe you were looking more for what the general will of the commission is from a policy standpoint, if this is something we're open to. Or right. right. That's right. Not the mechanics of it. Yeah, right. even if it right. takes longer than until next week. Well, I, I can tell you right now, those alleys are not being maintained by the village. We haven't paved them. We haven't graveled them in years. And um, I know our police patrol them because, you know, it's part of what they do going around the village. But if they all shut down and only had the easement for the uh, utilities, that may not be such a bad thing. I, we'd have to see what... I don't live on an alley, so right. I can't speak for the people who live well, on Well, also, alley. too, because, you know, like I said, we have to, you know, it's how what the homeowners think about their property rights of having access to the backyards. We don't know any of those those things. Those are all have stuff that we have to be looked so, at. Fred, would you be okay if we say, you know, this is something that we're going to continue to discuss, but we don't have a deadline to get it done? Oh, all right, fine, Rox. <laughs> <laughs> Commissioner Ross, he said something that I just want to clarify so it doesn't um, get some wind beneath it. It's not that the village no longer maintains them. My understanding, because I asked this question myself a few months ago, is that we didn't necessarily maintain them. Our garbage trucks going down the road maintained them, and that's why you didn't see the grass growing up. It was Oh, kind you didn't like see the grass growing up, but you saw those pits and those... Oh, no, absolutely, you know, but it's not like we're purposely deeper. not mowing them. We we didn't mow them before, is my understanding. It was right. our truck kind of took care of it. Right. Okay, we'll move on to uh, requests for placements of items on next uh, meeting's agenda.
And I think we've already discussed on some of the stuff that we're going to roll over there. Yeah. I don't have anything to add. No. no. Nothing? <laughs> okay, uh, reports. Village manager. Tomorrow, the public services manager, myself, and the police chief will be um, attending a regional hurricane meeting for Commissioner Heyman's District 4 where we will um, go over the district's um, operational plans in case there's a hurricane, including where the municipalities are to report to, to pick up supplies to bring back to the village, and those sorts of things. So we will be doing that once again. Um, I went last year, and um, we will all be going tomorrow. Annexation update. Um, yesterday, the County Planning Advisory Board met and on the agenda was the North Miami Biscayne Corridor East application as well as the Biscayne Park Biscayne <coughs> Corridor East um, application. After about uh, almost two hours of lengthy discussion and um, testimony from both um, cities as well as from the public, um, the Planning Advisory Board made a motion to approve, recommend approval to the Board of County Commissioners, the Biscayne Park complete application, and to deny the North Miami application. And by a unanimous vote of six to zero, we um, basically have the green light now to go to the Board of County Commissioners. I've um, been speaking. <laughs> it was quite exhilarating to be there for that moment. It was um, very exciting for all of us. And I have to um, thank our um, legal counsel, um, Becker and Polykoff, for their tenacity throughout that process and getting us there. So uh, it's, it's, um, we still have some hurdles, um, as any process, due process does. And um, we still have the issue that North Miami has a application for the same area. And the county charter states that if there are two conflicting applications for the same geographic area, it cannot be finalized. And that is the opinion that the county attorney gave yesterday. It cannot be finalized. And that was a very interesting choice of words. So the county attorney said that we can proceed to the Board of County Commissioners. We can even proceed to our final vote of the electors. Um, but uh, this pro the process cannot be finalized until the conflict goes away. And really the only way the conflict is going to go away right now, I think, with that unanimous recommendation to the Board of County Commissioners is for North Miami to withdraw their application because I, I think it would be quite odd for the County Commission to go against the Planning Advisory Board's um, recommendation when it was so strong. What the Planning Advisory Board talked about in their um, deliberations were a lot of those benefits that we know we have. And it was the history of Biscayne Park, our lack of commercial areas, our, 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 um, our budget um, difference between us and North Miami. Um, during my testimony, I pointed out that North Miami has a $60 million annual budget this past year, and ours is $2.4 million. And I think that really resounded um, strongly with the um, Planning Advisory Board talked about the difference between our assessed value and why we're excited to be at 159 um, million this year, they're at 2 billion. So it's a big difference. And, I, and the Planning Advisory Board really said, um, I, I can't directly quote um, the member, but it was along the lines of, it would be hard for anyone to look at these two applications and not go with Biscayne Park. So I think um, it's very favorable to us. Um, we will continue um, with Becker and Polykoff to try to work with North Miami. As you know, I've gone to two commission or council meetings. Um, the mayor and I have tried to meet with as many people as possible on their council and in their administration. And even when they didn't want to meet, we still tried to get them to listen to us, including, you know, me, you know, talking to people in hallways of City Hall over there about it. Um, we will continue to ha ha have them understand at this point it's in their best interest to not pursue this, waste money pursuing it, and to withdraw and perhaps reapply for the eastern portion of Biscayne Boulevard, which was a portion of their application. And we are also um, already setting up meetings to meet with um, some of the commercial um, landowners on Biscayne Boulevard because they were there at the meeting 
and um, they did express some concerns um, about the difference in the millage rate, but they also indicated to us some of their wants for the area, and it's wants that we've already talked about, and that's changing the zoning in that area. So um, we're gonna, we've already set up one meeting, and we're gonna continue to set up meetings over the next few weeks to meet individually with those commercial property owners to introduce them to Biscayne Park and understand what their goals are and what our goals are, and um, hopefully go to the county commission with support from the commercial property owners. So, um, and, and that reminds me, that was the other thing that um, really um, resonated with the Planning Advisory Board, and that was that we did not shirk away from the residential portion. And they, they um, these are seasoned Planning Advisory Board members, and they reflected on that some of the goals of annexation were to bring residents of Miami-Dade County into municipal boundaries and that we were willing to take on new residents um, was impressive to them, whereas the other application cut right outside of those residential areas. So that was very advantageous to us as well. And um, as I said yesterday, get us, please get us to the county commission so we can go back to the electors and let them decide and make that final decision. So that's where we are with annexation. Any questions? The, the, the process, would the process allow North Miami to amend its application and only, and, and you know, would go back to just the parts that don't overlap? Yes. So would we be supportive of North Miami amending its application? Throughout all of our talks with them, I have I've taken the liberty to share with mm -hmm. North Miami that we would be completely supportive of them taking the east side. I, I've made that assumption because without that conflict, we had no issues with them being on the east side outside right. of San Sushi. Um, and I would hope that the commission would concur with that stance. And with the comments that I heard from the meeting yesterday and comments I've heard in the past, it's a very important, seems very important for the North Miami residents to have uh, that San Susie Boulevard, both north and south of it, be part of North Miami. So I think that's great. Because it, it, it squares up their boundaries. Yes. Right. And it's a great um, economic opportunity for them. And we've, that's what we've been trying to remind them of during our talks, because there's an application for a high-end auto dealer um, on that parcel. But it also includes another parcel that's in North Miami. And until there's a reconciliation between um, those two parcels, mm -hmm. they cannot go forward with the development. You cannot have a development order for a parcel in the county and a parcel in a city. So they need the unity of those two parcels. So w hopefully they will walk away from yesterday. I think there's a little feeling of defeat. Walk away, reconsider, and understand the importance of them having that east side amend their application, and that will allow us to finalize the process. Okay, thank you. Thank you. By the way, before we leave this subject, I just want to commend you for the way that you represented us, both you, the chief, and Becker Polyakov. Um, we could not have had better representation at those meetings, and the proof is we are where we are and, and have made some gains. Thank you. Thank you, chief, for your time yesterday on this, too. Um, regarding uh, Village Hall and Log Cabin restoration and the Annex Building update, um, mobilization has started at the Log Cabin. Last week, landscaping was um, removed from around the Log Cabin. We left some of the native trees on the north side of the cabin, but removed everything that was close to where the most of the demolition would be taking place. We've been finalizing our asbestos remediation. Um, there was minor asbestos in the building, but the good news is, is that it was part of the, um, the glue that kept the carpet on top of the tiles um, in my old office area, the public services manager's office area, and the um, police station. And the good news about that is unless it's disturbed, it's not dangerous or, um, or there's a, not a health concern. So the disturbance is taking place during the... Um, restoration and the demolition process. So we have to abate it now so that it's safe. And that's taking place. Um, we hope to have the construction fence up sometime this week. And the first step of the actual work taking place will be the careful removal of the floor. 
so they can start the foundation work. Um, so you're not going to see necessarily um, walls coming down for the additions right away because they want to carefully remove the floor before they start any demolition work to make sure that no damage is done to those floors or any additional um, things happen. Regarding the annex, um, it's pretty exciting. Windows are in. Um, the mechanical, electrical, and plumbing, MEP, is finishing up this week. Once that is all done, then the sheetrock will be going up on the walls. Um, the septic and drainage is going in right now. I don't know if you were out by the site yesterday. You might have seen our very large um, septic tank out there. So that's going in. Um, that small portion of Northeast 114th Street will be closed again tomorrow as they continue to work on the drainage structures. Um, the roof, uh, the nice thing is, is we're at that point in construction where we can be outside on the site working on the roof and working inside all at the same time. Um, things start to go a little faster. And it's ju June 1st yesterday and the rainy season's upon us. And we were supposed to hot mop the roof today, but we waited for rain that never came all day. Um, but weather permitting, within the next couple days, we'll be hot mopping the roof, which would then allow the um, tiles to go on. So hopefully, within the next week, um, we'll start to see tiles. Um, stucco work has already begun outside, and it's really going to look like a real building very quickly. We did a walkthrough yesterday with the um, contractor, and um, I pushed him on the schedule. and. I he feels that we can be at substantial completion by the end of the month, which is what the contract calls for, um, with everyone working quickly together inside. Um, we plan to do a, uh, doing a walkthrough with the employees uh, by the end of this week so that um, in case we missed anything, outlets, um, workspace, um, all of those things, all eyes will be on the building. So before they close up the walls for good, we can make sure we've caught everything. And um, we're continuing to move along. We have great communication with the state. That still remains. And we're on time and accurate with all of our submittals to the state. Any questions about that? Manager, um, one thing I'd like to start calling instead of the annex, because it does confuse people, why don't we start to call it the city hall? Because sure. the log cabin is no longer the city hall. No problem. We will do that. Uh, probably a new village hall for a little while until we <laughs> get through well, the well, at changes. Least, at least it's village hall. <laughs> yeah. Because this way, you know, sure. everybody Absolutely. understands that we're not just putting out another building besides our village hall. Absolutely. Um, are, are, you, are you finished with yeah, your? Sure. I have just one more item, and that's regarding the audit. Okay. But that, could you also, too, uh, give a report on the restroom, please? The restroom? Yeah, it's open. Yeah, it's open. Well, oh, the women's restroom's open, yeah. That's yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, r the um, other exciting news is that we've received our audit. This has been put on the dais for all of the commission members. We will have the presentation as we do every year at the July commission meeting. We will have GLSC here to give their presentation. Um, everything came out good. Our um, Two little things that I would like to um, highlight is, what's that? Well, one little thing and one big thing I'd like to highlight is, I'm sorry I've lost my page because I went to the big thing. Um, where's my letter? Oh, it's up here. The um, village um, financial condition. What page number? On page um, Roman numeral lowercase 2, right up at the beginning of the book. This is the letter from myself to the commission, just a summary. Has improved from in unfavorable to inconclusive. So we're one step closer to being, well, we are one step closer to being favorable, but we are not unfavorable, which I think is very important. And part of that has to do with a little piece of information that is found in the last paragraph of page six. And I would like to read it to you. The increase in unrestricted neck position, and for the lay people out there, that is called our reserves, 
of 120,838 was attributed to an increase of revenues from current year operations offset by a decrease in expenditures from current year operations and transfers out to other funds. So we are uh, expected to put $120,000 into our reserves or have for other uses um, based on last fiscal year that ended September 30th, 2014. And we're very proud of that statement. Thank you. Is that the in, in, you're in the report? <coughs> okay, village attorney. I'm here to alert you that your liberty and property is once again at risk. The Florida legislature is in session. <laughs> 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 so we are monitoring it. Uh, it. You know, they have to have a budget by July 1st, and they're going to plan to be together till July, uh, to June 20th. And the governor currently stances that he wants $700 million in cuts. Often that is done through unfunded mandates and through not recognizing our home rules. So we're monitoring that, uh, talking to some lobbyists that are monitoring on a daily basis, and we're hoping that our grant stays in and when they pass the budget. So just wanted to let you know where that's where you're at. I reached out to Mr. Caserta today yeah. to see if he had any updates, and it was the most um, ambiguous response I've ever gotten from Mr. Caserta because he's on the ball and it was basically summed up to be, well, they're in session, <laughs> you know, so yeah, I think that's, that's the feeling coming out of Tallahassee right now. It's very unclear what's going on there right now. Is the grant not irrevocably committed? Well, it, it, it's, it has to stay. A future grant, not the yeah. not the million oh. dollar yeah, grant. No, no, the future. future no, no, the future. Yeah, right. yeah. Okay. We're on a list that is actually, it, the good news is, is this grant, unlike the million dollar grant, is in the general appropriations budget. It's a budget of, I think, um, 30 million, 38 million, which is very small compared to the rest of the budget. There's about 45 to 50 projects on that list. It was recommended by the Florida um, Historical Commission. So hopefully it will just go through as part of the um, Division of Historical Resources department budget, unless someone's got a, something against historic preservation right now and they're gonna use it as a chip, yeah. so. And also good news is that they have for the past several years funded. Right. Correct. That yes, it's, 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 a, it's a line item in a departmental budget, so it's pretty innocuous, but it's really strange up there right now. Very so. Th this is the grant that it's the hundred and it's a hundred thousand dollar grant, but we have to put in fifty thousand, so it's a total of a hundred and fifty thousand dollars. Correct. correct. That's correct. the one. So okay. no, no reason to think otherwise other than it's just very strange up there right now. Yes, that's for sure. Um, board and committee reports is. Of the Recreation Board. I just wanted to get the commission. I wish Rosemary would be good to talk, but she commits me to it. Uh, just to give you an update on the first annual bike race, um, the plans are about 75% complete. Um, the medals have been donated by Archie's Awards, and the refreshments have been donated by Creepy Critters Pest Control and Bass Children's Foundation. We have about uh, two or three people still to talk to. Uh, we still need volunteers. And if there's any questions that you can ask about the bike race, you can ask me and Ms. Rosen. So we're yes. just going to continue. Yes. Uh, as, as, as the chief informs me, uh, this is uh, Rosemary's project, not uh, the captain's project. So she, she actually takes over. Um, but anyway, so it's coming out really good, and we're going to continue to work close with the village and the chief on to make this uh, annual event and to be successful. Thank you. Danny? Re regarding parks and parkways, uh, we had a discussion item at our, at our last meeting uh, having to do with a proposal that was kind of floated to, to take over part of the athletic field here for some other purpose. And we discussed that item and first we were kind of told that wasn't really going anywhere or there was no current plans. I'm not, I, w I don't want to paraphrase, uh, but there weren't any current plans to move forward with anything like that. And, and the board, uh, I think, unanimously um, expressed that that was short-sighted, taking over the athletic field that then would preclude that from being used for that purpose uh, into uh, the long future. 
Um, so I don't know if that's what was on the, was one of those things that was talking about repurposing uh, properties here. We also had a discussion about the, um, well, um, you know, primarily we were concerned with, with, you know, taking over portions of the athletic field for, for other purposes that, that would possibly be put somewhere else. I think there was a, a, some sort of a path or something, uh, exercise path that was discussed at some previous commission. Thank you. Is there any other uh, board members here that want to uh, make comments? Okay, commission com comments. Uh, uh, Commissioner Jonas. Nope, nothing. Commissioner Ross. I have no further comments. Okay. Announcements. Thank you, Vice Mayor. On Monday, June 8th, we have Code Compliance Board at 7 p.m. Wednesday, June 10th, is a Public Art Advisory Board at 6 p.m. Saturday, June 13th, we have a quarterly trash pickup. Um, on Monday, June 15th, Ecology Board at 6.30 p.m. Monday, June 15th, is the Planning and Zoning Board at 6.30 p.m. Wednesday, June 17th, is the Parks and Parkway Advisory Board at 6 p.m. Tuesday, June 23rd, is the Recreation Advisory Board at 7 p.m. Friday, July 3rd, all village departments are closed for Independence Day. Sunday, July 5th, will be our Bark of July, Dogs in the Park Day. Monday, July 6th, is the Planning and Zoning Board at 6.30 p.m. And our next regular commission meeting is Tuesday, July 7th at 7 p.m. <laughs>